If you want to get better at learning, remembering, and being able to use the licks you learn on the guitar, then keep watching, because this is my ultimate guide to learning licks. Hi James here, welcome to my channel and welcome to my ultimate guide to learning licks. By the end of this video, you're gonna have an effective way to learn and practice licks on the guitar. This is not only gonna help you learn and remember them more easily, but it's also gonna help you to actually use them in your playing. And of course, this is the whole reason that we learn them in the first place. Today's lesson is brought to you by my Noble Music Theory for Guitarists book. This book has helped thousands of guitar players around the world nail the essential music theory knowledge that they need to know. It unravels the mystery behind intervals, triads, chord progressions, major and natural minor scales, minor keys, pentatonic scales, and much more. It's available from most online bookstores around the world. You can even ask your local library to order you in a copy. There's a link in the description below this video. You can click that and learn more about Noble Music Theory for Guitarists and see if it can help you become a better player and all-round musician. And now, on with today's lesson. Before we carry on, let's talk about the mindset behind learning licks, because I think the real value behind learning licks is that it gives us raw material to use in our own playing. If we think of something like a scale pattern, which we might learn, if we've just got that, all we've got is a pattern of notes, which we might just play up and down, but no one really does that when they actually jam and improvise. Having some good licks gives us some clues about what to do with that scale. It helps us to learn which notes are gonna sound good to bend, which notes uh, are gonna sound good as a double stop, this kind of stuff. And I think the thing to remember with learning licks, and this is really important, is don't just learn the lick, learn from the lick. I just wanted to make that really clear before we move on. When I talk about learning licks, I'm not talking about simply learning them so that we can play a carbon copy of something which somebody has already played before. We need to go beyond that. Now, I'll be helping you to do that a little bit in this lesson, and I'll also be making some future videos on this topic. Maybe like many players, you find it really hard to learn licks. You just don't seem to be able to remember them, especially when you want to use them in the middle of a solo or something. So what can you do about this? Well, I don't think there's any one secret trick or hack which can instantly fix this. It's patience and practice. But there are six things that I try and do when I learn a new lick, which have really helped me out. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show with you now. Now, before we go any further, I kind of need a sample lick that I can use to demonstrate things with this in this lesson. So I've quickly grabbed a lick from one of my courses. You don't need to learn this unless you want to. If you do, you'll see the tab up on the screen in a minute, you can check it out. I'm just gonna play the lick a few times before we look at the process I would use if I was gonna learn this lick from scratch. The lick's in the key of E minor and played up at the 12th fret using the E minor pentatonic scale. If you wanna learn it from the tab, pause the video and you can take as long as you need to to do that. Here's what it sounds like. Three, four. <laughs> The first thing to do is listen to the lick. I'm talking listening carefully to it 10 to 20 times before you even try and play it. If it's in a recording or a video, then skip backwards and forwards over that lick, really checking out the sound of it. If it's in a lick book or something, well, it's probably come with an audio file or something you can listen to. Try and find a way to do this because when you listen to it a lot, several times before you try and learn it, you really soak up the rhythm of it and the melody of it. and you're, trying, you're really capturing in your ear what it is you're trying to play. Now, if you think about it, if you don't really know what it sounds like, how are you even going to know if you're playing it correctly when you try and play it on your guitar? Another great thing to do is to try and learn to sing the lick before you try and play it on your instrument. If you think about it, if you can accurately reproduce it with your voice, then it means that you, to some extent, internalize the melody of the lick and the rhythm of the lick. And this can really speed up the learning process when you come to play it on the guitar. Now, it doesn't matter how great you are at singing either. <laughs> As you can hear, you don't need to be Freddie Mercury or Adele or someone to do this technique to really benefit from it. Do learn to slowly sing the sound of a lick before you try playing it on the guitar. This is something that most players never do, but it can really speed up the learning process. Have you ever tried to force a four bar lick into the middle of your guitar solo? Hard, isn't it? I've tried to do it too, and it never works. And this brings me to my third point. When you're learning a new lick, 
break it up into small chunks. This is massively important, okay? I'm talking like groups of four to six notes, smaller if necessary, really small bits which are easy to remember. This is how I'd break up our example lick. You can see I've broken it up into tiny little chunks. Here's the first chunk. So I would loop that one round until I could play it and remember it quite easily. When I knew it, I'd learn the second one. Then when I've got them, I could draw them together. And so on, you work through the lick, gradually learning each tiny chunk and adding it onto the previous ones until eventually you have the whole lick. Here's where this helps you out. You see, it doesn't just make a lick much easier to learn. It also means you can start using it in your playing. It's much easier to figure out how to use something that's got four or six notes in it in a solo than it is with a lick which is like three bars long. It's just much more versatile and can be made to fit in a lot more situations. So what you can do when you've got these little chunks is put on a backing track and just experiment around with seeing how you can use each one in your playing. You soak them into your vocabulary and eventually they just become things that you just spit out in your solos without even really knowing you're doing it. I'm going to try this now over a backing track in E minor using the first chunk of the lick. I'm just going to keep playing it round just to get used to using it in my playing. I do the same with the second chunk. I could try putting them together. You can see how easy it is to start using these lick fragments in your playing. And this is different when so many people say to me, I've learned all these licks and I can't, I can't use them when I come to play a solo. I reckon those licks are normally too long. Most people can learn something short like this and start using it pretty quickly. Now the other great thing you could do with this is once you've got a couple of these little lick fragments, is start to find obvious ways that you can just change them slightly, just modify them to find different ways to use them in your solos. You can hopefully hear how I'm trying to find different ways to get into it, different ways to get out of it. Sometimes I'm repeating the bend several times. I'm just really experimenting with that lick chunk to see what I can do with it in my playing. Another cool thing you can do is visualize the lick or the lick chunks. This is where we imagine seeing our fingers playing on the guitar without actually doing it. Let's say I was going to do this as I was learning the first lick chunk from our example lick. I would play the chunk a few times. Now I'm going to stop playing it and I'm going to look down at my fingerboard and imagine that I can see my fingers playing it. When I've done that, I might play it a few more times. Then I could visualize it again. So I'm kind of mentally rehearsing playing the lick. Another thing that you can do, which is really powerful, is to sing it along as you visualize it. This is great ear training. It's really uh, training your ear in a practical way. Eventually you'll get to the point where you can maybe hear melodic ideas or lick ideas sort of mid-flow as you're jamming and actually play them on the guitar straight away, which is a pretty cool thing to be able to do when you're improvising. So for example, I might play the lick chunk. Then I might do a bit more singing. Ba -da -ba -ba, ba -da -ba. Ba -da -bum. And again, as I'm doing that, I'm visualizing the fretboard there, just imagining I can see my fingers playing the lick. Really powerful technique. Now, athletes and sportsmen and women have used vis visualization for decades to improve their performance. And I think we can use it to improve our skills as guitar players. So give that visualizing trick a go next time you learn a new lick. Another important thing to do when you learn a lick is to see how it embeds itself in the scale shape or the arpeggio or whatever it comes from. This means that you can really find that lick and the bits that make it up anytime you play that scale shape. Now let's say you move the scale shape to some different keys. 
you're gonna still be able to find the lick because you've kind of attached it to the scale shape rather than attached it to a specific fret. For example, the first part of our sample lick is coming from this shape one minor pentatonic pattern, which I'm sure you know. Now, if I kind of see it as sitting in the middle of that scale shape, I've embedded that lick idea inside the scale pattern. If I was to move the scale pattern down to the key of, say, B flat down here at the sixth fret, straight away I can still find my lick. That's a whole lick in the key of B flat. Now the way I can, well the reason I can do that is because I've attached it to the scale shape, not to the twelfth fret, okay? So make sure you can see these ideas, how they embed themselves in the scale pattern. This will really help you become a better improviser, especially when you want to move things into different keys. Our final tip is to use the lick. As soon as you can play it, practice using it in your playing, and it doesn't have to be perfect before you do this. Put on a backing track or a drum loop and loop the lick over the top of it, just like you would if you were actually playing it in a solo. You see, many players just endlessly collect licks, but it's when we really force ourselves to use them like this that we drive them deep into our playing vocabulary, and then they start to come out naturally in our solo without us having to kind of force it to happen. More importantly, all the raw material we talked about earlier, the little bits that make up the lick, that starts to soak into our vocabulary. And before we know it, we're using all the bits from all the licks we've learned to create some really cool lick ideas of our own. So remember, listen, Sing, junk, visualize, embed, and use. Which one of these tips is the most useful one for you today? Leave a comment below this video with some feedback. Did you try these tips? Did they work for you? So let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my Noble Music Theory for Guitarists book. You can find a link to that in the description below this video. It can really help you nail the music theory essentials that all players and singer-songwriters need to know. So check that out. There's a link in the description. Other than that, I really hope what we've covered today has helped you out. So have a great day. Good luck learning those licks. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you again next time.